Hi Baking Buddies, I'm Jen Johns. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm showing you how to make a 3D frog cake. His name is Newt and he's what I like to call geeky cute. I thought it would be fun to make him into a cake with green ombre layers hiding inside and then fondant covering his whole body. Newt is a character in the game Best Fiends and this is the second video that we've done for Best Fiends and I just wanted to take a second to thank my friends there for helping us once again to bring you guys another cake tutorial video this week. We really appreciate the help from them. Newt is one of the new members in my team of fiends that I have set up to defeat the slugs by matching same colored objects. This month you can play the Easter Egg Challenge, hope there's chocolate in this challenge, where you can win some amazing and rare rewards. If you beat all 16 challenges, you will win the new bunny character, because it's Easter time. In the game, I'm on level 75. Let me know in the comments if you're beating me. If you want to play too and you want free stuff, I've got a link in the description box for a free download of the game and $5 worth of gold and diamonds. Let's get started on this tutorial. So the first thing we have to do is make our fondant features because they need a little bit of time to harden up. Now in order to speed that process up, I've mixed all of my fondant with a little bit of Tylos, which helps it to solidify a little bit faster. So here I've got two white balls of equal size rolled out here, and I'm just going to take my round cutter and I'm going to cut out two blue pieces, and these are going to be the color on the eyes. So I'm just kind of neatening up the side with my finger there and then taking a little bit of water. I just want to wipe that onto the back and then I'm going to transfer that to my eyeball and then I'm going to repeat that for the second one and I'm also going to use a smaller cutter and I'm going to cut little black ones out for the pupil and again I'm going to do this twice. A little bit of little water on the back, pop that there onto the center there. Now Newt's eyes are a little bit wonky so you don't have to worry about being too precise with the eyes. And then I'm just taking a really tiny piece of white fondant and I'm just attaching that. It's super tricky. There we go. So attaching that there as the highlight. So I'll repeat that for a second eye. Now also for the frog arms and the frog legs, we're going to be using basically a lime green fondant. Also again, I've mixed it with Tylos. You wanna really work this fondant uh, in order to get everything mixed together. If you've mixed the color, you can make lime green with yellow and green. I'm just taking my finger here and I'm kind of partitioning a little bit of the bottom here. And that's where my fingers are gonna go for the webbed part for the frog. And then I'm just bending it in like this. I'm gonna flatten this corner over here. And this is the part that's going to touch the frog right there kind of curving that like that. Then I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to slice into this part that I laid out before. And then I'm going to take my roller. I'm just going to roll down to flatten these ones out. Now to make this one a little bit more pointed, you can take your sharp knife again and you can do that for all of the little pieces here of the, of we'll call them the frog fingers. So I'm just going to play with that with my fingers and then stretch that one out like that. Using a fondant tool, we can just work those little divots together better. And then using the ball tool again, I'm just going to press down into this area like this. So I'm just kind of marking those. Now these are going to need to harden completely. So I'm going to press or just set that aside there. And then I am using 216 grams of lime green fondant for the leg. Now the leg is a little bit trickier to make, but what we're gonna do is just roll out this fondant. So I'm going to, right on that cut line there, I'm going to press my finger into that. And then about halfway through, I'm gonna press my finger down to there. So I've got two little divots, because I'm basically creating the joints in the leg, like this. Then I want this to be smaller, so I'm gonna roll that all out. I've still got my joints here. Now, we're going to position the leg. So here we bend that part up, bend there. So that's like the knee and we've got that flattened out like that. So you've got your little leg standing up here like this. Take the roller, roll it out, and then we're going to cut it just like we did with the hand. So taking my knife, 
I'm going to cut into there, cut into there, trim out a little bit, and then we're going to do the same kind of little details on the, basically the little toes here, work that in, roll that out, kind of clean it up with your fingers, and then just add a little bit of detail and let this dry as well. So now we're going to shape our cake. What I've got here is three eight inch round cakes and I'm putting a layer of buttercream in between each of them. And I have one nine inch round cake. So this first cake at the bottom here is the darkest version of green that I created. Now, if you want to know the exact amount of green and yellow that I use to make each of these colors of cake, make sure you check out the description box for that amountage. So here I've got the nine inch one going on a second. So I'm going to put on some buttercream here. You don't have to go all the way to the edge of this one because we will be doing some trimming of this one, but you can spread it out. And then I'm going to stack my next two greens and the difference between them, all the greens is, is very subtle. I just wanted that little bit of an ombre effect on the inside of Newt. So our next one is going up here. This is an eight inch round one again. And then we're going to finish off our stack with a little bit more buttercream. And then we're going to start carving. So we're going to be carving Newt starting at the top, which will be the narrowest and then working our way down to the widest part, which will be the nine inch round. So to do that, I'm just taking a, just a sharp knife and I'm going to start carving just at the top here because it's the easiest part. So we're just going to go around and as I work my way around the cake and downwards, I'm just going to make sure that I don't have any of these sharp edges left and that everything is nice and smooth. Got my cake cut here. I'm going to take some more vanilla buttercream and I'm going to smooth it on just this part here to start with. I kept my crumbs and I turned my crumbs into cake pop mixture. So right here at the front, I'm going to put the vocal sack for Newt at the front made out of cake pop mixture. So just kind of like shaped a piece here and you just want to press it on Pretty much you can put it anywhere you want to there. Now, if you're having trouble with that sticking, you could always use pieces of spaghetti uh, in order to help get those in there so it stays solid. Mine's kind of hanging out there pretty easily, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. Actually, I might put one just for safe measure over here. So like that. And now with that in place, I can cover everything in my vanilla buttercream, including going over top of the throat sack. Cake's covered in buttercream. Now we're going to wrap around a piece of fondant that I just rolled out and I've got one side flat and I'm basically just attaching it to the cake. So I've got a little place to like indent the mouth underneath, above, underneath this little part and then above the throat sack. So just gonna set that on there. You wanna put this on there first before you cover the cake in fondant. So I've rolled out the fondant here on a silicone mat and it's about, a, um, about an eighth of an inch in thickness. So I'm just gonna pick up my mat and drape it over top of my cake. I just find that this is the easiest way to do that. It's kind of how I learned and that's what I'm most comfortable with. And we just peel back the fondant mat and then we've got a fondant covered cake. So then we just want to start at the top. You can use a fondant smoother for pieces. I like to start out just with my fingers, kind of gently working it down towards the bottom. So I've got all of my pieces here that we need to put the cake together on the board. Now, one of the final things we have to do with fondant here on underneath the throat sack is I've just cut out a piece of almost like a, a really, really golden yellow or almost like a light orange. I'm just gonna slide that under there. And that's a great spot too for hiding any wrinkles that you had in your fondant because going over top of the throat sack is a little bit tricky sometimes. So that's kind of nice to have that little piece to cover up any mistakes there. So now coming over back to my board, what I wanna do is put on some final touches on the eye. So I've just got little rounds cut out here. 
and I'm just going to wrap this around the flat part. As the eyeball sits and dries and hardens, it there's a, like a, a basically a flat edge to it where it's not round, and that's the part that I'm covering, and that's the part that's going to sit against the cake. It kind of comes in handy to have that little flat bit. And then, because I'm going to be using spaghetti, I need to drill basically a pilot hole into the eyes and the legs and the arms. And I'm just going to take like a sharp tool here and I'm just going to press that in. And that's just going to make sure that the spaghetti doesn't break when it goes in. So then I can take a piece of spaghetti, break off that part, and then just make sure that it's going to work in there. And that works perfectly. So when I go to put that into the cake, I'll be able to poke that in quite easily. Final things we need to do is I've just been shining up the vocal sac here. I'm just using a little bit of water with a sponge. What that's going to do is just basically highlight that so that when light hits it, it's going to look a little bit brighter than the rest of the cake. Water gives fondant a nice little shine, whether you want it to or not. Here I'm putting on my eyeballs. I've got the spaghetti that's laid into the pieces here. You can arrange them. It's nice that they turn around. Then over here, I've got the spots for the legs and the arm. So I just have to set the leg up there beside it. And then for the arm in there, I'm just going to press or press my little guide hole that I sent, that I drilled in there to begin with, onto the side there. If you wanna put a little bit of water underneath there, you can to help the sticking. Now until it dries in place, excuse me leg, I'm going to put just a little bit of paper towel there. You could use foam as well if that's easier for you. You also might want to use something a little bit thicker than the spaghetti or a couple pieces of spaghetti, uh, like a wood skewer or a lollipop stick. So I'm gonna finish putting this all together and I'll show you the finished product. I hope you guys enjoyed my riveting cake design today for this 3D frog cake. Now to finish off the cake, what I did was I sliced into it so you guys could see the ombre layers on the inside. And then I shaped my cake board like a lily pad. So I just cut a chunk out of the front there. And then I wrapped it in some green riveting ribbon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, share it with your friends, and thanks again to Best Fiends for sponsoring this video. See you guys next time.